Once you got settled in there at Manzanar, how would you describe the, what daily life became like? Well, for those of us who didn't work, or for those people who didn't work, I think it was kind of boring. There was nothing to do. You got up and ate breakfast, and then you had all that time until lunch, and then all afternoon until dinner. Unless you were, you know, a mother taking care of kids and doing the laundry and everything. For the first time, I think our, our parents had leisure time that they, they had never had before. People who had their businesses work 10, 12 hours a day, seven days a week, and farming people worked every day from sunup to sundown. And all of a sudden now they had free time. And I think a lot of them enjoyed that, that free time that they were having. My mother learned to roll bandages for the Red Cross. And she joined the a cappella choir, or a group that sang Japanese songs a cappella. And uh, she took care of her grandson, the first one. And I think she really enjoyed life for a while anyway. But it was, for those people who didn't work, it was kind of boring. The rest of us, we worked and we kept the, the camp running. And uh, I think that helped in terms of our, uh, you know, mental state. What kind of work were you doing? Well, <clears throat> a week after we got there, my sister-in-law came and said that the Marino sisters had come in and they wanted to help us uh, put together a school because all the kids were running around and no one was in control. So uh, they found an empty barrack and we went over there and they gathered all the children together. There were no chairs, no tables, no chalkboard, no materials, no books. And I can't remember what, we, I guess we sang songs and we took them out and played games. And, but there were no sports equipment either, so uh, I guess we played tag and things like that. And we did that for a couple of weeks. <clears throat> and then we were told that the camouflage net factory had completed building the, the shed and they were taking only American citizens to work for the war effort and, and build cam and make fa camouflage nets for the army. So we went over there uh, and, and got assigned to work, make these huge 10 by 12 nets, uh, weaving different green, yellow, and brown colors, and that they used them to cover the, the tanks and the heavy equipment for the army. And I did that for a couple of months, and a call came out to young men and women to help harvest the beet, sugar beet crop because the young men on the farms had gone to war and they, they were short of labor and the sugar beets were going to rot in the fields if they didn't have people come and, and harvest them. So a lot of the young men went off for what they call a short-term permal. And so a call came out that the Manzanar Free Press was looking for reporters and typists and people to work on the paper. So I went over and applied for the job of a reporter, and I got the job. And so I worked as a reporter for <coughs> about a year. And as the older people left camp to go into the service or to relocate outside of the West Coast, uh, I got the job of uh, assistant editor, and then I got the job of managing editor. And I did that until I left in October of 1943 for Madison, Wisconsin. 